Hey guys, welcome back to Product Nation, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about the latest and greatest updates coming to the Android 11 beta. So let's get started. There's construction above my house, so if this is noisy, I'm really sorry. Now in the past, Android updates from update to update have been pretty massive with big changes, but where we're at with the Android 11, the major changes aren't very huge and it's mostly about tweaks and making things a lot better than they were in the previous generation. Now we're gonna be talking about the five major changes that we've seen in the Android 11 beta and also throw in one bonus change for you guys. That's actually very exciting and a lot of reviewers are very excited about that. But let's just start with the first and the biggest change that we've seen that is in the notification shape. Now Android doesn't really shy away from changing their notification shade every update that they come out with. They're trying to optimize it the best that they can to remove the clutter and mess that you get in your notifications. Now more and more apps that come out have notification support to them and they can be very noisy and try to get that spot in the notifications which can be very annoying for Android users. Now with this new update in the Android 11, the notification is being split into three different sections. That is conversations, alerts, and also silent notifications. Now, as you guys can probably tell, conversations are gonna be every single notification that comes in from applications that are related to messaging like Slack, WhatsApp, and they're gonna have that Facebook Messenger type bubble to them. Now, this depends on the developers if they wanna enable that to turn that into conversational notifications, but otherwise that's where all the messaging apps are gonna sit in the conversational notifications. The second one is gonna be alerting notifications, which is more of every other application that you know of that sends you day-to-day -day push notifications like Instagram, maybe Facebook likes or comments on your post. These are just apps that send you notifications generally. The third one is gonna be silent notifications. We have seen these in the past as well. These are more of apps like Twitter, LinkedIn that just send you like silent notifications constantly, which Android knows don't really need that priority. Now the cool thing about conversational notifications, which is the biggest change actually, is that you can have different features within them, like highlighting a certain person that sends you messages as a priority. So it shows their picture in the status bar as well, and it puts it through the do not disturb mode so they can actually get in touch with you even when you're in do not disturb, which is really good. A lot of developers can turn their notifications into conversational ones, so you can get those chat bubbles that pop around everywhere for that use itself, which is really good for people who like it more organized. Now the second major change we're seeing is in the long hold of the power button. This is basically going to allow you to access a lot more settings within the power button hold itself rather than the ones we've seen previously. Apart from having your Google payment and boarding passes and all, you're also going to get access to home control devices. So if you have smart home devices at home, just like Apple devices, you're going to be able to control them within that menu itself when you long press the power button. This is really great because you get to customize it as well if you don't really use majority of these. But if you have a smart home system like I do where you control different lights using your smartphone, this is going to be placed within the long press of the power button, which is really good as well. And it gets you there very fast and you're able to control and slide and everything within that menu itself without having to enter the specific app itself. Huge plus. Android updates you... Hello darkness. What did I do to deserve this? <laughs> if you enjoy it, please, just let me say bye bye. The third change that we're seeing is gonna be in screenshots and multitasking. Now the screenshots itself, when you take it, it isn't really gonna go into the notifications shade. Rather, you're gonna have a mini version of the screenshot on your home screen itself, where you can customize it, add in pen strokes, crop it, and share it directly from there. So you don't really have to leave whatever app you were in to do all of that stuff. That's a very good time saver. Moving on to the multitasking side of things, this has changed a little bit as well. When you go into the multitasking menu, the app drawers itself are quite large, but you've got three different buttons underneath it to customize what you wanna do within the multitask itself. The first one is gonna be screenshot, which obviously takes a screenshot of whatever app you're looking at and you can do whatever you want with that. The second one is gonna be select, where it allows you to select different text on the screen. You can copy it, paste it, share it, whatever you want from that menu itself. And the third one is gonna be share, which takes a screenshot of whatever apps on the front and you can go to the share panel directly from there. The fourth one is gonna be user suggested apps on the home screen. What this basically means is that the phone is gonna understand your behavior of what apps you use the most and suggest these apps to you on the home screen itself. So based on your behavior and how you interact with your phone, these app suggestions can change and they're gonna be up there on the home screen for you to select whenever you need to. Now to me personally, I don't feel like this is really an important feature because the home screen should have apps that I wanna use all the time 
and they'll always be there when I need to get to them. It makes more sense to have it in the app drawer like it always was, but for people who want to customize their phone and have it understand what they do all the time, this might be a great feature to interact with. Now the last one we're going to be talking about is the inbuilt screen recorder. We've seen this in the past, but this is going to be an inbuilt recorder within the notification shade that allows you to do a screen recording without having to install a third party app. You're also going to get things like control over the sound, media sound and external microphones, which is really good for people who don't want cluttered third party apps like me. Now I mentioned that there was going to be a bonus feature, that's going to be the voice access. This is basically going to allow you to understand the context of your screen without having to touch it. The phone's going to understand what's going on on the screen and you're going to be able to control it using just your voice. Now you can see this example work live in Marcus Brownlee's video. We're going to post that up somewhere here so you guys can check that out and you get full control of your screen without even actually having to touch it. And the algorithm works in such a way that it really understands what you're talking about based on the context of the app. So you can actually tell it commands that it really understands really well. This isn't very new, but the way they've done it now, it understands you way better than it ever did before which is really great now as of now these are only available on the pixel phones but we will probably see these roll out on different Android phones in the future Now, majority of the features that we're gonna mention here are the top biggest changes but if you want to know all the different changes we made a video on this in the past that we're gonna link up somewhere here so you guys should definitely check that out from the developers preview I, don't, I, I did it. You heard me. I don't need to repeat myself. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button and do consider subscribing for more content just like this. And we'll see you again in the next one.